saw you beat that man like I never saw no man get beat before. And the man kept coming after you. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Ever, 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 ever. Welcome everybody to another BDA Box and Film Analysis. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Sri Saket Sorongvisai fight against Juan Francisco Estrada. Man, I got the name right, Sri Saket Sorongvisai. See, I do my homework before I do these things. But anyway, it's going to be a very good fight. Um, Juan Francisco Estrada, it's been a while since we've been wanting to see him get a big shot. And he got a big shot at a big fight last year when he took on Carlos Quadras and now he's going to be taking on Sol Rongvisai and let me tell you something about Sol Rongvisai the monster that's right, the monster a lot of people think it's Naya Inoue who's the monster but in my mind it's Sol Rongvisai because anybody can hit hard like Naya Inoue I mean we've seen big punches before especially punches who have explosive expl you know, a lot of explosiveness in the shots and hand speed but can he take it? can he botch forward and take another guy's shots? when the going gets tough Will he continue to keep going forward and get, uh, be willing to get into exchanges? So wrong beside Ken. We've seen him do it before. And again, we've seen guys with good chains before. We've seen uh, Kasimuma. Lately, we've seen Gennady Golovkin. So there's guys with good chains out there. But so wrong beside is in a league of his own because he, he'll he just take the shots on his forehead, keep barging forward. He's willing to take shots in order to give his. And um, Juan Francisco Estrada is a very good offensive player fighter himself you know he's got good combinations but i don't know how this is going to look against so wrong beside and by the way the other thing about so wrong beside is the way he reacts to punches is a little inhuman i think he's on this like sociopathic spectrum where he doesn't feel fear the same way most of us do or fear for that matter i think he kind of enjoys getting hit but anyway that's all speculation all i can tell you is what i see in the ring and that is that the guy is unafraid to take punches to a certain degree because again he's a human being but uh, for the most part he has higher resistance to punches or to pain than most of us do and that makes him a very very dangerous fighter indeed so we're going to take a look at his strengths we're going to take a look at his weaknesses as always and uh, we're going to try not to go too much into detail otherwise this video might last too long so without further ado let's get right to it all right so one of Sir wrong besides underrated strengths is as we see here he's counter punching the guy knows how to counter punch uh, for the most part he's the one that likes to engage and create the exchanges but uh, he can counter punch and we're gonna start looking at that first because it does throw guys off course when he starts counter punching look at this see he can dodge the right hands and counter with left either upstairs or downstairs he can counter with right hooks again there combination punching see here he takes the right but counters with a right hook and then a double left hand and that's the other thing we're going to see later on is that he punches with the same hand in succession twice in a row or sometimes three times in a row and they're usually you know, fighters they're told not to do that but uh, he evidently does not respect that notion or that rule see there he dodges the right he dodges Gonzalez. this is the first Gonzalez fight by the way so he dodges the right he has an opening right there for the left hand. Now, Gonzalez, again, a true professional and really a monster himself. A very good fighter. He was able to block. He saw that left hand coming. He blocked it. Or sort of. It sort of landed on the on the half on the elbow and half on the, as you can see here, the um, the waistband. But he still took a look. And he still got pushed back, as you saw there. Again, there you saw him taking the left hand. Again, takes another left hand. This time, three lefts upstairs. Fourth one missed. And he's got some tricks up his sleeve, as you can see here. See then? We're going to take a look in slow motion. So he steps back, makes Gonzalez miss. So Gonzalez misses with the left hand. He's just barging forward himself. He misses. So Sorong Visai changes angles. Look at that. Has a perfect opening for uh, right to the body there. Boom. And you can see there again, right on the waistline. 
and it makes Gonzalez sort of like Ooh, react to that shot. So so long as I can counter punch when he wants to. Again, look at that. Counters the body. And again, that body shot. See how it pushes Gonzalez back, back and forces him to like bend over a little bit too. Oof. Right on the waist waistline. Those punches hurt. Again, see then? Again. And then upstairs. Double left hand upstairs. They're hard left hands, by the way. Here he is against Carlos Cuadras, who is a faster guy than Gonzalez. And even then, so wrong beside doing a very good job of countering upstairs. And then, as we're going to see later on, he can also counter downstairs. Look at that. So let's look at that again. Slow motion. So you see here, Quad is looking for an opening. Steps in, one, two. So wrong beside dips down. Dodges the one, two. He's got a perfect opening right there for a short left hand. And look at how short that left hand is. It's, there's not a lot of space. He's not winding up on it a lot. Not putting a lot, of, but he's just, it's hip movement. It's all legs and turning his body over. Not Like I said, look at this, not a lot of space. Boom, but he hits it right on the sweet spot right there. And you can see Quadras reacting right there. Must have hit him in the liver. And those hurt. So he's a very good counter puncher, both to the head and body, when he wants to. Because most of the time, as we're going to see here, he prefers to barge forward. With one twos. Or with right hooks upstairs. So as you can see here, see how he, look at that strength. That's sort of like a like bitch slap there. It's almost like he's bitch slapping his little cousin or something. Like, get the fuck out of here. And the reason why he's able to push Gonzalez that way with such force is because the legs. So wrong beside, like most Asian fighters, especially from Thailand and the Philippines, have very strong legs, very strong calves. Look at these calves. And I've mentioned calves before in another video, and I hope people don't think that I'm obsessed with guys' calves, but... It does give you better power. It doesn't give you one punch knockout power. It won't make you hit like Gennady Golovkin or Sergei Kovalev, but it does help to give you strength. It serves like an anchor because look at how anchored Sorongvisai is to the ground. And it allows him to really throw punches with a lot more force. And he puts his body into them. As you can see, his hips, his upper body and his legs are anchored. So it gives him a lot of strength and he just hits Gonzalez and pushes him away. As if he were a child. And Gonzalez isn't a weak guy. He's a strong guy himself. So for psychologically, I don't know what it does to a guy like that to be able to push back by the other guy's punches. And again, see here we see short shots from Sorong Visai. And he can throw them from afar, or again, like we're seeing here. I don't know how he does it. Throwing straight shots with so little space. I'm pretty sure he works this on the bag. And here's the thing: when you're throwing punches like this on the bag, you're not gonna they're not, you're not going to hear them as if you were throwing them from afar. You know, you're not going to get that same whack, whack, you know, that sound that makes everybody look at you when you're hitting the back. But they are effective. Look at this. Boom. Nice short shot. And then Gonzalez comes back. And we're going to take a look at more examples. Oh, did you see that? Right hook. The same punch that takes Gonzalez out in the rematch. And that's because his left, his left hand is low when he's throwing the right. Look at this. Boom. And again, look at Sorong Visay's technique. Look at his legs. Look how he turns his body over. And just sort of pushes with the shot there. And that's the other thing about Sorong Visay. So it's almost something he pushes his shots. Again, those close shots on the inside. Look at this. Boom. Boom. Very short space in there. Very short straight shots. And they're making Gonzalez's head swivel back uh, to the side. So they are hitting him clean. And they are causing damage to his brain. Again, double left hand there. He just barges through everything, so wrong beside does. And then he changed angles. Did you see that before, two sequences ago? Here he is against Quadras. Boom, right hand. So he'll come forward. And even if you're throwing five punch combinations, he's going to find a way to punch through them. Or in between. There again, he saw him with the uppercuts and then the body shot. And here you see a little, a little, you know, little tricks that so wrong beside has. He punches with the left. Sort of brings that rear leg forward, squares himself up, gets into a different stance. So he's switching in this one. He's um, in position to throw 
a right hand that lands right there. So he's shifting here. He does have certain little tricks. And here, look at here against Yunai. Um, how he's able to get the swing that he gets on his arch. He's fighting from an orthodox position in this one, by the way. I don't know why, but uh, boom. And then look at the swing that he gets. See that? Boom. It's like he's like digging upward. All right. So now we're gonna take a look at the body punching again. So wrong beside a very good power puncher, and he uses that power to good effect by going to the body with it. Because as we know, you wear guys down to the body, you wear them down late in the fight. So you see him there digging with the right hook. But she throws one, two, threes there. He he dropped Gonzalez. And now here's the thing: a lot of people think, oh well, he dropped Gonzalez. He was an like, off balance type of shot, but it really wasn't. As you're gonna see in the here, he's gonna get hit with a see there. He gets hit with a right and like underneath the heart. And that drop, so he was maybe half off balance shot, but I also think he hurt Gonzalez because Gonzalez took his sweet ass time to get up and he didn't complain about the knockdown, so something must have hurt him. Again, there you see him digging with that, uppercuts on the inside, right hook again to the body, and he's able to see that. Fucking crazy guy, he's willing to take shots from a power puncher like Gonzalez and just keeps barging forward. This isn't boxing, this is just barging forward and punching. Again, nice little uppercut to the body, and there you see there he faints. Boom, hits him with a right hook to the body again. Works both sides of the body. Here he catches Gonzalez with a nice left uppercut. That sort of didn't land really quite flush, but you can see what he's trying to do, which is he's trying to dig underneath the elbow and pull the organs up, push him up in order to paralyze his opponent with those body shots. Again, digging the body shots to the soul, down the middle, to the side. See here, he's so relaxed, he's taking shots, and he's watching everything, his eyes, he's constantly, he's not afraid to take punches. So he's constantly watching what's going on, uh, see here, he's constantly watching what's going on, he doesn't care about taking shots. Gonzalez misses, and there's an opening right there for someone beside to dig in, a right hook to the body. Very good composure from him. And those body shots were guys down. And did you see that right there? Again, shifting. He throws a 1-2, shifts and then goes downstairs to the body. Gonzalez wasn't expecting that one at all. And again, look at him. See there? He doesn't usually do that. He doesn't move his head when he comes forward. He doesn't actually move his head all that much <laughs> in any situation. But when he does, he has great success. Look, at he faints. A faint, by the way, from Sorongo. Like, That's right to see, but he can't do it. So he faints. Gonzalez buys the faints, and Sorongo like, comes in with a right hook. And there, left to the plexus, then two hands upstairs. Again, works both sides of the body with both hands. And sits down on his shots and really tries to go to town on that body. Look at that. Uppercuts down the middle. And here's where he really tried to slow down Quadras. The, the very speedy quadrus, very fast guy with both his hands and his feet. And so Ron Visay made investments downstairs. Even though he lost the fight, he managed to hurt quadrus, as you can see there. And as we saw before, where he, in that sequence where he really hurt him with the left hand. And here, see here, we're going to see another sequence where... And again, it's, notice how he throws those left uppercuts to the body, really trying to get behind or under the elbow. Well, you can't really see here, but... And, and then he goes upstairs with it. And see that that body shot, see how it freezes quadras? A body shot will make you bend over if it hits the right spot. It makes you bend forward. Okay, so that paralyzes a guy like quadras and it gives the attacker, the hunter, like so wrong beside, a chance to get some free shots. So now quadras tries to get some back, tries to counter, and he tries to move, but then quadras hits him again to the body. That's what you gotta do, and that's what he's gonna have to do against uh, Estrada. Not much to tell here, other than he's doing some great work to the body. Beautiful body punching. And then this one, ooh, right on the plexus. Now, I gotta warn you, if you're the queasy type of person, or if you're eating while you're watching this, I suggest you turn back now and uh, skip the next 10, about 5, 10 seconds, because we're gonna see Yanai here puke from a body shot that he took on the plexus from Sarongvisai, all right? So, he took a shot at the plexus, spits out his mouthpiece, and then out goes his lunch. Look at that. 
It looks like he ate some sort of like a paste or something. Maybe he ate some pate. I don't know. All right. Now you can keep looking if you... At this point, we're going to show... I'm going to replay... We're going to watch the body shot again, but we're not going to see the... The no replay of the puke here. So you see here? Boom. Nice shot right to the plexus right there. That's what body punching does. And I haven't ever seen... I mean, the only other instance I can remember of somebody puking during a fight was when Robbie Peden got hit with body shots from... Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez back in 20, 2002. Uh, other than that, I can't remember anybody else making somebody puke in the ring. And uh, there you see one last shot from Son Rong Visay. Now, here's the other thing about Son Rong Visay is this is something you can't buy or work necessarily all that much in, in the gym. That is durability and strength. Son Rong Visay is a very strong... What the hell happened to my voice there? Son Rong Visay is a very strong and durable fighter great chin and we're gonna see why he has a good chin one of the factors that makes him we're gonna take a look at his that he, how he tips his head down how he tucks it in but he's also he's just a very strong guy overall and he's got a big heart so as you can see here he's just again like i said before barging forward he just barges through he gets into exchanges and against roman gonzalez of all guys a very good combination puncher that can throw punches from all over and uh, so wrong beside just takes those shots and doesn't care because and as you can see Gonzalez is landing shots but so is some wrong beside and like I said he's again those nice short shots straight shots and body shots on the inside from some he doesn't care he's willing to take shots in order to give his because he has confidence in his power and in his chin in able to take those shots before the fight he already knows he's gonna t be taking shots because as we saw before he's got good defense when he wants to use it but he just chooses not to use it all that much again here look at this replay lands two shots takes a big right hand doesn't even flinch he just keeps coming forward barging forward again like i said a lot of that word describes exactly who so wrong beside is he's he just barges in and continues working the body and throwing straight shots and look at this again exchanging body shots with roman gonzalez now to put things into and there he takes a good left hand and he just doesn't care backs up a little bit but then his heart forces him to come back forward um the guys who have before this fight the guys who had given gonzalez a tough fight were um juan francisco estrada and uh, uh who am i carlos quadras okay so those two guys were able to give him a good fight right but uh, Juan Francisco Estrada as well, for the most part, he stayed in there sometimes in the pocket and, and exchanged with Gonzalez because he had to. He threw good combinations. He was able sometimes to back Gonzalez up, but he never stayed in there as much as Sorong Visay did. Neither did Quadras, who was obviously more of a mover than both Estrada and Sorong Visay. Sorong Visay is really the only one who's willing to stay in there and exchange. Now, that didn't really happen all that much in the last two rounds when he started losing a little steam. But for the most part, he'll stand in there with anybody. If he can stand in there in front of Gonzalez, you bet your ass he's going to stand in there with anybody, everybody else. So just, you know, he's letting his hands go. That's the thing about Sorong besides. He lets his hands go in any situation when he's on the inside, outside. See, they're mixing it up, throwing combinations, going to the body. He's got pretty good hand speed, too. See that? Six punches in a row in succession. Very good combination punching. And see, so you see there, he again those short shots on the inside. I don't know how he gets that type of leverage. They're working on Gonzalez's cut again. He'll just fight back again. Look at that combination again, just straight shots on the inside, getting unusual type of leverage with those shots. So, very good fighting from so wrong beside right there. Here he is in the rematch again, just get willing to get into exchanges just to be able to land those big shots of his and in this one oh, and did you see that by the way look at this so he gets into an exchange with gonzalez and gonzalez there again every time he throws that right that left hand goes down and he gets it with a right hook and we all know what happened in this fight with that right hook afterwards so here you see so wrong we said just keep barging forward so we're gonna take a look at the slow motion again showing good explosive hand speed when he wants to so he starts off with a left a little left and then a jab another left all the while he's inching forward and getting on a good angle see his lead foot outside of gonzalez's lead foot 
throws a left, Gonzalez dips to his left, I mean to his right, so they both load up on the right hand, but it just so happens that uh, Sorovic has a superior positioning and lands that right hook that had landed in the first fight and in the second one, but this time no apologies from that left hook and down goes Gonzalez. And then you see Sorovic keep barging forward with his left hands and this is going to be the last knockout here, boom, I mean the last knockout, the knockout. And I'm going to show you here who he reminds me of. That's right. So Rang Visa reminds me a little bit of George Foreman. Same type of style. Not a lot of head movement. Sort of like weird pushing shots that you're not supposed to throw in boxing. You're not supposed to push your punches. But evidently, both of these guys have good snap on them. They look slow sometimes. But they, they push those big shots. Before you know it, you're getting hit to the head. And snapping. getting Your head snapped back and you're going down. And because that's the other thing about... Um, uh, so wrong beside here we can see here is that you you take those shots of his and you think I mean you 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 land successive punches you're teeing off on his chin on his face and you think oh it's this is gonna be easy I mean no nobody can take my punches you know that's how most fighters think and so they start teeing off on the guy's head and before they know it they're uh, the other guy is, is catching them between their combinations and so now it becomes a tug of war of you know, rock and sock and robot type fight. You know, we start exchanging. You hit me, I hit you, and again, before you know it, you're getting weakened. You 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 start you start losing stamina because you're just throwing punches nonstop because because of the infinite openings that you see. And before you know it, you're getting into a, a war and you're getting worn down and you might be out, especially against the Galaxy like Wrong Beside, who hits very hard. And um, that's what happens here with these guys, you know, with Sir Longvisai. People think he's going to be easy to hit, so therefore he must be easy to knock out and stop. But that's not how it works. And so here we see another staple of Sir is his strength. Look at how he pushes Gonzalez back. And this wears guys down because Gonzalez is not willing to go back. He's trying to push Rongvisai back and he can't. So that takes more strength out of Gonzalez than it does from Sir Longvisai. And the reason why Sarang Visa is able to do this in part is again because of the strength of his legs. Very strong legs. Again, see you see him pushing Gonzalez back, walking through his shots, landing shots of his own. Very stiff fighter, uh, Sarang Visa. He takes shots and they just bounce off his big head. And he's able to come forward and push the other guy back while punching at the same time. So there you see him. Just walking forward, pushing Gonzalez back. See Gonzalez there trying to walk. He's staggered a little bit because he's trying to do everything he can to push uh, Sarang Visay back, including punching non-stop, but he just can't do it. He was able to do it late in the fight, but... I mean, for the most part, it was Sarang Visay pushing him back. As you can see here, pushing, you know, Sarang Visay is fighting back. There he finally clinches a rare moment of humanity from Sarong Visay, a rare moment of weakness. But for the most part, see how he's just crowding Gonzalez, pushing him to the ropes, not caring about what it takes in return. And now we're going to take a look at that chin of Sarong Visay. Now, why is he such a good defensive fighter? How come he can take such a good shot? Well, part of that has to do with the way he tucks his chin. And look at his chin, okay? So the punch, the right hand comes in, and he dips it down, exaggerates the movement, but it's effective, kind of a little bit like how Gennady Golovkin does it. So he takes a shot to the forehead. Another factor that might come into play here is the strength of the neck, because as you see here, he takes the punch, but then the uppercut sort of, it sort of grazes him, but you can tell that based on how exaggerated he has his chin tucked in and the strength of his neck, it doesn't snap back. And if your head is getting snapped back during fights, eventually it wears down your spine and that wears down your upper body movement and that also wears down your legs and before you know it you're weakened and you're taking unnecessary shots so that's why it's also important to work on the neck but see here keeps the chin tucked takes another one too but this time again the chin again tucked in and so he's taking everything on the forehead and it allows him to barge forward so that forehead sort of acts like a like a shield you know like a turtle shell And so he's able to take those shots. That's partly one of the reasons why Sorong Visay is able to walk forward. But as you can see here, he also has good head movement. When he wants to, good angles, pivoting, keeping the guy turning, spinning him. Here again, good head movement, and then he clinches. So he has defense when he wants to see her circling away. See her playing Matador, circling away. 
And we're gonna take a look at this here. See, so that's like about nine, eight, nine punches from, from Gonzalez, okay? So let's look at it in slow motion. A little right hand, left uppercut, and right hand. Just small shots thrown at about half speed so that he's trying to set up Sorong Visay for a big shot, all right? So he throws those three shots. Boom, nothing lands because Sorong Visay is sort of like rolling with him a little bit, dipping down. So that now he dips down, uses his shoulder to make that, to deflect that left hook. See that? Gets up. The right uppercut misses, but that's more of Gonzalez's fault. And now Gonzalez comes back with the left. So Wrong Visay starts rolling with it, gets into a defensive position, dips down, evades the right, and then walks or pivots. Uh, not walks, but he just launches back. Yeah, pivots. He pivots and makes at the same time he rolls with the left. Eight, nine punches from a world class guy and nothing landed. So Sorong Visay does have good defense when he wants to use it. Another defensive slash offensive tool that is illegal but that can work is headbutting. You see that? Nothing keeps a guy away from you in the ring than a good headbutt. Because now not only do they have to worry, his opponents have to worry about the body punching and the power and the fact that you can't back him up. But when he barges forward with that chain tuck, because of the way he tucks his chin in, he'll hit you with the goddamn head. Head bonding sociopath right here. Now let's take a look at Sorong Visay's weaknesses because there are a lot of weaknesses here that we can look for. And uh, number one weakness is, of course, his openings, uh, his or his willingness, I would say, to get hit. So here, Gonzalez was landing some nice tricks to the body in the second fight as well. But some, for some reason, he stopped it. I think the reason why he stopped going to the body with those straight rights was because it's easy to hit, or relatively easy, I should say, to hit Sorong Visay upstairs. So, you know, he neglected going to the body with those straight shots. Uh, Gonzalez, but that's what I'm talking about. And so partly maybe that's why he stopped. But, you know, he can be hit. He can also be hit with rights upstairs. Because, again, he doesn't move the head all that much. See there? He's willing to take those shots with that chin of his tucked in. And uh, he just keeps barging forward. But he's taking shots. And the question is, how many shots of this can he take? Because that Gonzalez fight was really brutal, especially at the end. And uh, Juan Francisco Estrada is a relatively fresh fighter who can throw punches from all angles, by the way, just like Gonzalez, except he doesn't hit as hard as Gonzalez. Quadros doesn't hit as hard as Gonzalez, but he was able to snap wrong beside his head like with right hands as well. And here you see, here you see some wrong beside his right hand very low, and Gonzalez hits him with a nice tight. Left foot, yes, so wrong beside again, has a good chin, but the question is how many of these can he take? And it's not like Estrada is a light puncher. He's somewhere in between Quadras and Gonzalez's punching power. Not as light a puncher as Quadras, not as strong as punch a puncher as Gonzalez, but you know, good power. Decent power. And here you see uh so wrong beside his head straight up. He tucks it in too late, but he's not moving his head, he's not using a guard. That's why he reminds me of George Foreman a little bit in that. George Foreman also, he used that crab defense a little bit, that cross-arm defense late in his career. But in the when he was younger, he just, you know, sometimes he would move the head, but for the most part, he would just walk guys down. So Wrong Visay does not have a guard, and he does not move his head all that much. So he's right there to be lined up for that right hand. Or that left hand, as you saw there. Left, sort of like left up, because left hooks, he can be counted with left hooks. And as we're going to see in the second part of the, the film analysis sometime later next week, Carlos, uh, Juan Francisco Estrada can counter with good left hooks and with other punches as well. And here you see Sorong Visay tasting those, those counter lefts or uppercuts as well. See those left uppercuts? He can be lined up for those left uppercuts. Yunai hitting there with, uh, with an uppercut as well. There he's barging forward with his chin down because he does tuck it in. So he's coming in with his head down and boom, catches. A right up again. Now this is a song wrong beside. This is from four years ago, I believe. This fight against Quadras. So he wasn't as as uh, as composed as he is now, but he does remain nevertheless just as open, or maybe a little less open. But he's still wide open for his shots. Uh, let's just say that finding him, finding his head with your gloves, isn't the hardest thing to do. The hardest thing, however, is yeah, you can win rounds against him, but can you stop him from coming forward late in the fight? after he's dug those body shots in. And that's the other thing. Listen, a guy like Sorong Visay, we know he can take a good punch upstairs, 
but he is a human being and those body shots will wear him down so we're gonna take a look at that hold on hold on we're just replaying here the uppercuts see that that nice right uppercut juan francisco estrada throws him and because uh, so wrong with like i said he doesn't really care all that much about taking shots so his his defense is a little bit leaky it's inconsistent and so he'll sometimes he'll keep he'll forget to cover his body and his head as well there again being pushed back by left hooks and then like we saw here the sequence here where he really got hurt now finally he tucks in those elbows but for the most part he doesn't care and he can be hit to the body and juan francisco estrada loves going to the body all right so and then see gonzalez working off those body shots again digging those body shots in that can worry that can pay dividends late in the fight for Estrada. look at those shots there and this is the other thing that um that uh i have to point out here's the thing yes so wrong is very dangerous tough and a hard puncher and he's willing to his willingness to exchange is a really scary proposition for anybody that being said you saw quadras running away from him but he was landing shots but he was moving way too much excessive movement and gonzalez on the other hand didn't move enough so he was just willing to stay in there and uh really try to take those shots from from so long beside in order to give his own because gonzalez again he's a monster himself but i think he kind of underestimated so wrong with his toughness so what the strata is going to have to do is incorporate what we're about to see here a little bit of movement so you see gonzalez switching angles and here we're going to see him see there what he's doing here he gets into the exchange but then he says you know what let's let's use a little defense so he leans back makes so wrong beside miss with that big left hand of his because again remember so wrong beside puts a lot into his shots he, he really does put a lot of hip movement into the shot so if he misses he's wide open for one two see that and the other thing about so wrong beside is he doesn't move his head a lot either before punching or after punching so an opponent should know where his head is going to be which is down the middle in the center always in the same place so he can be countered and again see here Oh, rare moment where he gets backed up. And again, see Gonzalez turned him, pivoting. That's what you gotta do. Don't stay in front of him. Hit him, which is a relatively easy thing to do, and then move away. Lean back, uh, pivot around him, you know, uh, spin him, uh, get out of the way. Do whatever you gotta do, but don't just stay in there and exchange with him. Again, see that? Gonzalez, I'm gonna have to rewind a lot of this because it is a very important thing. It's a key to victory here for Estrada. Gonzalez throws the right hand takes a little step back see that and then just boom counters with a one two because again wrong visa is wide open and then wrong visa see that he runs away a little bit jumps away because he did, he was hurt he did feel those body punches so he he can be hurt to the body as we have seen before and see here gonzalez again keeping him turning and there you see making him miss making him pay but you don't want to stay too long in there because eventually Estrada is, I mean, Sorong Visay is going to counter with his own shots. So here you see here, Gonzalez threw a 1-2, comes right back up, throws throws a right hand, and as always, Sorong Visay counters himself, but he misses, Gonzalez leans back, and then comes in with a beautiful 1-2, um, left hook to the body. Beautiful sequence. Again, mixing the shots there, varying the speed, keeps Sorong Visay turning, and then hits him with a left, uh, and see they're bobbing and weaving again leaning back and countering from Gonzalez making him miss making him pay that's what you gotta do you know you can hit uh, Sarong beside but you also know he's gonna hit you back if you stand in front of him so and his head is gonna be in the same spot so bob and weave hit him and then get out of the way pivot around him uh, twist uh, uh, turn him you know spin him uh, fight in and out but don't stand in front of him, that's suicide. And see here Carlos Quadras getting in and out, like I said he should, and he's making, see how Sarong Visay is out of balance, looking amateurish, and I know that was four, three, four years ago, or maybe even five, I think. But um, remember how David Lemieux looks great against guys like Curtis Stevens and Marcos Reyes, who stand, guys like that stand in front of him. But once you make him move and you give him different angles and footwork, all of a sudden he starts staggering all over the place and he looks amateurish. And so far, 
some wrong with Sainz hasn't fought anybody like that since Quadras. Gonzalez wasn't going to dance around him. But you see here Quadras making him look a little bit foolish. So maybe an, a, a, a good boxer would be able to do that again. We don't know. We don't know how much Sorang Visay has improved against this style of boxer. And he's getting hit. His head getting snapped back. Quadras, like, this is why he won the fight. Because he was moving in and out and scoring shots. And see that he's staggering more because he's off balance. Not necessarily because he's hurt. But the judges don't care. They just see a guy getting hit and staggered. And they think he's hurt. And they give points to the other guy. Again, see that? Estrada can do incorporate things that Gonzalez has done. The body punching, the combination punching, and a little bit of movement from Estrada. And now see that Ron Visay following Estrada around. He's not cutting off the ring. I mean, Estrada, Quadras. I think I might have mistaken. I, I might have said Quadras and Estrada and interchanged those names both times. But you know you know what I'm talking about, guys. Come on. Give me a little credit here. Anyway, so you see Ron Visay again. Not cutting off the ring. That's not good. Against Gonzalez, he didn't have to cut off the rim because Gonzalez was right there in front of him. But what if Estrada decides to box a little bit more? And see again, Gonzalez here in the rematch. See that little bounce back he did, bounce back, and then counters with a jab. So in and out. That works against Rungvi side. And here you see Gonzalez made a miss. And so Rungvi side sort of, you're going to see him here. He squares up. See, he squares up. Look at how wide open he is. No guard at all. Squared up, he can't counter from this position, and he takes a big right hand. So he does have some moments where he just, I don't know, he's, he's like he gets hypnotized or something. And again, bounce back from Gonzalez, bounce back, he lands a jab. And see here again, now this was, this isn't necessarily a weakness, but it's just to show you that Sorong Visay is human. But then again, he looked human against Gonzalez, who back in the day, in his prime, he was inhuman as well. Very tough guy, so... This is after nine rounds of war and body punching from Gonzalez, and you see Sorong is a little tired and he clinches. Here you see him running away in the last round, buying some time. Here you see him clinching and smiling because even he can't believe that he has to clinch. Here you see him just getting backed up. But uh, he can get tired. But then again, I, who was it against that he got tired? Against Gonzalez. Can Estrada do that? Does Estrada. Is Estrada going to be able to maintain the same amount of offense and with the same amount of power that Gonzalez was able to do? And even then, Gonzalez had to take a lot of shots himself in order to back and, and get Sorong Visay in this state. I don't know if Estrada can do that, but just to highlight that Sorong Visay is human. But this is what you don't want to do. Stay in there and exchange with Sorong Visay because as you can see here, yes, Gonzalez is landing shots, but so is Sorong Visay. And this is what he wants. It's like if you... If you get into a fight with a whirlpool, right? If you, I don't know why you would get into a fight with a whirlpool or how you would do it, but the last thing you want to do is go into the whirlpool. And this is what is so wrong with Saez. He's a whirlpool. Get the hell out of there. What's the matter with you? But Gonzalez, he wants to fight. Now, here's the other thing that. So that's what I'm saying is don't stay in front of him. Incorporate a little bit of boxing in and out, combination punching, and get out of the way. Because you know you can hit him. You know you can hit so wrong with But just make a miss. And get out of the way and then buy some time and the other thing is this Estrada was hitting him with some good jabs I haven't seen Gonzalez or Estrada I didn't see those guys I mean, or Quadras I should say I didn't see those guys work that jab too much so anyway guys that was a BDA boxing film analysis hope you guys enjoyed it let us know in the comment section what you think what we got right what we got wrong don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you on the next one take care folks you've told me about how rarely you have any experience that even begins to resemble nervousness or fear.